This is Towpath Landing, an Akron park where people have gathered in the past to hear music and attend arts events. But COVID-19 shut down arts venues and public spaces across Northeast Ohio, and the reopenings are just beginning. We decided to ask well-known photojournalist and fine art photographer Shane Wynn for her perspective. Shane has been photographing people around Akron and the area for many years. And because some of her work lives here on the Towpath Bridge, we started our conversation here. My name is Shane Wynn. I am an artist and a photojournalist here in Akron. I moved to Akron um, when I was 18 years old and I'm 44 and I've been a photographer for 25 years. I had someone actually come through and they were bringing touring groups through Akron. So it was, an, it was a group from outside of Akron and they came through the bridge here on the 59 bridge and I got feedback that they were like so happy to see our reputation is not necessarily one that embraces like diversity all the time and is progressive in that in that way but having seen this bridge that was like the topic of dialogue and conversation and that's what i want people to know and there are people that it's very important to them that we are like giving opportunities to everybody that is here or wants to be here as far as navigating the different funding opportunities during covid and the unemployment it's really um not, not generally the artist forte, that the side of the brain that we like to use with those organizational skills and things like that. We also, we, we all, some of us do have that skill set because we have to apply for grants and write artist statements and, ha and press releases and things like that. So some people are organized in that regard, but other, others are not at all and it's, it's not an easy process. I think that my work is a conversation starter and that it can, sometimes my work becomes journalism and sometimes it really does take off in the press. You know, I've had some series that had, had over like 20 million views and 200 stories told about them and I think that it does start to change hearts and minds. I want to go even further than that and I want to help to change policy and I become more and more directed with how I make artwork, where it's seen and who the audience is as I go, because I want tangible results. I think that COVID-19 has definitely brought a lot of these issues more to the surface. There, there's more opportunity to participate, and if you pay attention, you can, you can read. If you, you know, if you are diverse in, in where you're getting your press from as well, there are opportunities and there are actions you can take to participate, and I think that that's helped people to clarify what those might be. I think about the way that coronavirus affects some groups more than others all the time. Um, it's just another sample of the way that people are disproportionately given privilege or assistance or health care. There's a million ways in which people are not treated equally. I think that the way in, in the time of coronavirus and just in our general lives, what we can do is you say to yourself, what is my gift? What is it? In what way can I contribute to the world? It's a glance, you know, I, I say a lot of times, I stop people from scrolling. So if you're on your social media, it's that strong, beautiful image where you see yourself and it resonates with you. You stop there, then you gather the information. Artists, we, we can't, like, we're at home. We're trying to safeguard our families and figure out what we're going to do next. And we know that when the economy bounces back, that we're gonna be the last people that are brought back into the fold. That's how it works. And I don't know if you were there when I said it, but I bought a house over there. Yeah. I definitely think my work routine is going to change. I think that for a lot of people, myself included, this is thrown some perspective on what was my normal. And I realized that in some cases I had taken too many things on. When your life slows down like this, you realize how stressed out you were. <laughs> I had two months initially without any work coming in. I was able to really organize and get my life back to a more manageable place. 
cook meals for my family, spend more time with my kids. It just gave me a di different perspective because I'll have sort of like this clean slate, I'll be more selective about what I do moving forward. Creatives are going to create, so we're sort of like that stream through a stone, right? We're gonna find a way, and it doesn't matter what it is, and I'll just find another medium for now until I have an opportunity to maybe tell some more pointed stories about what's happening. I am absolutely hopeful for for the arts community in Akron. We had a lot of momentum building prior to COVID, and that's not going to go away. And a lot of that is personality driven. It's driven by people that really care about the community. And it's also driven by new research that links the, the overall health and wellness of the economy to the arts community. So it's not just people who care with big hearts, you know, big hearts anymore. It is um, actual research. People are now relocating and, and deciding to live places and invest in places that um, offer them a high quality of life high quality of life comes from arts and culture. Shane Wynn's perspective on the arts in COVID-19 is illuminating. She calls on us to be mindful of not only who we are, but who we want to be. As a photojournalist, she tells stories. As an artist, she inspires. And it's clear in this world of COVID-19, we need both. Until next time, stay healthy and stay connected.